The Molecular Science of Film and Photography, Chemlens Unit 1, by Sonia. Before digital cameras were created, something called film was commonly used to record an image. Film became one of the most popular methods in developing images due to its ability to go through multiple chemical reactions in order to record an image. So let's start by understanding what film is actually made out of. Even though to the naked eye, film may look thin, but it's actually made up of multiple layers. And it's the combination of these layers that give each image its character. Film consists of a transparent and scratch resistant layer called the supercoat. This is the first layer of film. And this protects the film and it's what gives the film that glossy texture. In more detail, the supercoat is the top layer of the film. And the purpose of this clear layer of hardened gelatin is to protect the emulsion from damage during transport through the camera. After the supercoat layer, we have the ultraviolet absorbing layer. Although we can't see ultraviolet radiation, photosensitive silver halide crystals can be exposed by it. An ultraviolet absorbing layer is included to protect the imaging layers from exposure by UV radiation. Underneath this layer comes the most fundamental layer to film, the emulsion layer. This layer is light sensitive and made from gelatin and the gelatin contains silver halide crystal grains, such as silver chloride, iodide, or bromide. Next, there is a layer of adhesive, or a subbing layer, and it's made from a firm and flexible plastic. This layer is needed because it provides support for the film, and it also provides support for the layers that come after it. The next layer is a supporting layer, called the base, or the film base. This base has to be transparent with some optical density, free from imperfections, chemically stable, insensitive photographically, and resistant to moisture and processing chemicals, while remaining mechanically strong, resistant to tearing, flexible, and dimensionally stable. There are three plastics that are widely used as a picture film base. Cellulose nitrate, which is one of the first materials used, Discontinued in the 1950s because it was highly flammable. Cellulose nitrate is chemically unstable if stored in conditions that are too damp. It can start decomposing. Or, if it's too hot, it can self-ignite. Cellulose acetates. These were developed to replace nitrate. Cellular triacetate, called safety base, is much safer to use and store than nitrate. Most current Kodak and Eastman motion picture film are coated on a cellulose triacetate base and polyester base, and these are used for all print films, most duplicating films, and some specialty films. Polyester is stronger and wears better than triacetate. Polyester's storage life is up to 10 times that of acetate. Because of its high strength, chemical stability, toughness, tear resistance, flexibility, and dimensional stability. The greater strength of polyester base creates thinner films that require less storage room. After that is another layer of adhesive with an anti-halation coating. This coating absorbs light and prevents it from being reflected back into the emulsion. The main chemistry behind film photography occurs in the emulsion layer. The suspended silver halide crystals are crystalline and cubic in structure. And in these structures, they contain silver ions, halide ions, in this case it's Br- ions, and sensitivity specs. These specs are impurities, such as silver sulfide. And these impurities are important because they play a crucial role in trapping photons from the light. If the crystal structure was perfect, that there would be no reaction. When the photon hits these grains, an electron is ejected from the halide ions. In this case, it's the bromide. And this causes the ion to become oxidized. The free electron moves around the crystal until it reaches a sensitivity spec. The electron is then able to combine with the silver ion, reducing it to form metallic silver. 
The place in which this reaction occurs is called the latent image center. The combining of the bromide ions and the silver ions at the sensitivity spec occurs three to four times at each spec before a small clump of silver is formed. The formation of this clump causes the latent image to become stable, and this creates a latent image that's invisible to the eye. So how do aspects of molecular and structural chemistry relate to film? Well, in the emulsion, if the suspended silver halide crystals weren't in crystalline or cubic structure, then the halide wouldn't really exist in a stable form. This would suggest that the silver ions and the bromide ions would not be able to combine in a sensitivity spec, since those can only appear in crystalline structures. And that bumped out electron from the photon would have nowhere to go, which would result in no latent image. Needless to say, a lot really does go on behind the scenes in your piece of film. And with all the layers working together in harmony, you can get yourself some physical evidence of molecular chemistry in action.